Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a movie review this week. It's the 1985 adaptation of a popular board game called Clue, also known as Cluedo, a movie about six strangers living in a mansion, being involved in a whodunit murder mystery plot. It stars Tim Curry, Eileen Brennan, Leslie Ann Warren, Madeline Kahn, Martin Mull, Christopher Lloyd, Michael McKean, and Colleen Camp. It's written by Jonathan Landis, and it's co-written and directed by Jonathan Lynn. The movie begins set in New England, 1954, six strangers Professor Plum, Mrs. Peacock, Mrs. White, Miss Scarlet, Colonel Mustard, and Mr. Green had, had all been invited to a party inside the mansion. They are being met by a butler named Watsworth, who is played by Tim Curry, who reminded them that they have been given many have been given the same message to protect their true identity. But during dinner, a seven attendee had arrived named Mr. Body, who was played by Lean Bin. But, and after dinner, Wetsworth takes everyone to, a, to the study and reveals the true nature of the party, that all of the guests had been blackmailed. Only leads to the fact that Wetsworth reveals Mr. Body's secret, that he was the one who was involved of the blackmailing between all six strangers and many others. And that's where Westward had gathered all the guests together to confront Mr. Body and turn him over to the police. But he also reveals this plan um, as his revenge against Mr. Body himself, who was both his former employee and his and because of his blackmail, he's also resulted in the suicide of Wetsworth's wife. In order to reveal their secrets in the police custody, Mr. Body reminded the guests that he decided to use an alternative proposition by using weapons that he had provided as presents, which includes the wrench, the candlestick, the lead pipe, a knife, a gun, and a rope, which part of this would be, be an idea to, to actually kill Watsworth and destroy the evidence once uh, Mr. Body turns off the lights. But when the lights turn on, only to discover that Mr. Body has been killed, only to find out which one of them killed him, he led to many murders that followed after this. That includes the killing of, of the cook, the motorist, the cop, the French maid, and the singing telegrammer. Unfortunately, what started this whole madness is what causes all six guesses to be involved in, in this situation, which means that one of them could be the killer. Well, this movie also features free endings to this movie. Yeah, free endings. Which is which is set on A, B, and C. I also heard that they actually filmed a fourth ending to the movie, which would have been A, B, C, and D as part of that, but it was never been shown in many editions, not even DVD and Blu-ray as well. So yeah, that's a shame because I would have loved to see the fourth ending. But, it would have been cool, actually. Which, apparently, Paramount Pictures at the time, when they released this in theaters, decided to show all three endings in local theaters. No matter which ending that you have to pick, you'll probably see which one is the real ending towards it. Well, which I'm not going to give away any secrets towards those endings, because those are the ones that that considered to be what it is. A spoiler. And if you have seen the movie, you'll probably know for yourself. And I've seen this movie many times already, so I know. So it's best to 
keep it that way. But I really did enjoy this movie a lot for what it was worth because this was indeed at the time the first movie adaptation that was based on a board game. Something that you never thought a movie could actually do. But it's also interesting enough because there was already a film that's kind of based on this premise as well called Murder by Death uh, that was made in 1976 which also featured Eileen Brendan in the movie but it had of course Alex Guinness and Peter Sellers so that's actually a very good film by the way um, even for a comedy and it, don't, it actually worked pretty well too for, for that premise alone but this movie was also a classic because I think Tim Curry is what stole the show for the movie for me because he was really a scene stealer as the butler named Ratsworth and, and I, I love how he was using all these reactments at, at almost towards the end of the movie where yeah he was trying to find out who, who really is the killer and, and that's when he started you know, doing his reactments and I like how he did that it was it was it was definitely comedy right there uh, there was a lot of slapstick that they threw in in the mix because it felt like it was a since this was said in the 50s it kind of felt like this was supposed to be like almost a classic uh, whodunit comedy in, in that sort of way and that were and it really did work on that level and and um, the whole cast in this film that includes Christopher Lloyd Leslie M Warren Eileen Brennan and you know, Madeline Kahn, yeah, who's no longer with us, not even Eileen Brennan either, and all the rest, of, yeah, they, they were excellent in this movie. I, I think they did a very great job, and you know, it felt like I was watching a play when I saw this movie. It almost felt like a play, actually, and I, I really enjoy that, and it, it was, it was hilarious, it was fun, <laughs> it was cool, yeah. And it was awesome. I really enjoy this movie a lot. But yeah, and it's always worth watching you know, many times. You know, when, whenever you, whenever you have time to for yourself, this is the movie for you. <laughs> and by the way, the Blu-ray that I own already, the new one that I just bought, has a very good transfer. Yeah, it's a lot better than I thought. Um, the audio, of course, was in mono, but that's okay because it, it made it up for it since the movie was uh, actually was released in, in mono, so they didn't have Dolby Stereo for this film. That's okay because it, it worked pretty well. Um, it even had this a classic song, Shake, Rattle, and Roll, yeah, so it's, since it has a 50 setting to it. Yeah. The mansion in the movie. Yeah, it looks exactly like any other mansion that you often see. Surprisingly enough, this was done in a set. But half of the scenes in the movie was actually shot in Pasadena, in South Pasadena, at a local mansion. So it's kind of interesting that all these scenes were actually shot. It felt like you're actually in a real mansion right there. And I used to have the board game too, a long time ago, because I used to play Clue when I was a kid and it was awesome because it had all the all the tools that you need or, and it has all the cards you have to figure out who actually did it. Yeah. it it's definitely like an interactive game once you watch the movie I know they were planning on doing another remake of this movie because they just did one for the hub in 2011 it was a five part miniseries which only has teenage actors playing the roles um, it was okay, but it was nothing special. But I would have been surprised if this movie even gets made um, someday. But I heard that Gore Babinski was going to do one, but unfortunately, since they were going to plan on doing the remake, um, the film has been shelved. So I don't know if that's ever going to happen. But either way, I, I still prefer the 1985 film. It's I mean, it has a lot of comedy elements to it. It was funny. I enjoyed it a lot. I would watch it over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I give Clue the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.